Good afternoon, folks. This is part one of my video series of how to make your own expansion chamber parts without spending a couple grand on sheet metal equipment. Because I only need to make them for one bike. Why am I going to spend a thousand bucks on a slip roller and a shear and blah 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 to make them for just one race bike? So, anyway, this is a very specific design cross-section of what you can see here on this plan. It was designed for me by a, uh, a very, very experienced two-stroke tuner. He's been doing this for probably 50 years. So he gave me all these cross-sectionals, cross-section widths and lengths of the various sections, and I translated them into AutoCAD and drew up this little plan. And from those, you can lay out the flat plans of the cones before they're rolled up. Now that process is a little complicated. I mean there's you know trigonometric functions for it but I've got an arithmetic, arithmetic method that's, that works just fine and I actually even dial into a spreadsheet for laying these out. But basically you need your you know your total radius and then your inside diameter and your outside diameter and your arc the beginning and the end and you need those numbers so you can figure out where to lay it out on the sheet metal. Now the key to making these things come out really nice is to have your lines, your cuts be perfectly straight and your arcs absolutely perfect. I had a guy make these for me, a sheet metal guy. He made me a set of them. You know, he didn't do half bad a job, but I did not admonish to him how important it was that these lines are perfectly straight and that these arcs are perfect. So he cut everything out with a hand nibbler and just did it freehand, even the straight lines. You know, I thought he had a sheet metal shear, you could just stamp and cut a perfectly straight line, that'd be great. But, you know, so when you go to weld them up, even with a, you know, nice little TIG welder, you still wind up with a, having to do a lot of fill in because there's little waves between the lines or that, you gotta grind the piss out of it. It takes forever. And in the ends, when you try to mate them together, you wind up with a lot of wobble and you're trying to sit them together and there's big gaps and yeah, it doesn't work out right. And it just looks like shit, and you wind up having to grind off a lot of extra weld bead to make it look decent. And they weren't perfectly round, you know, I had to finish them off on the mandrel. But we'll get into my homemade slip roller in another video. So anyway, how do we get these absolutely perfect without, you know, having someone else do it who's got all the equipment? Well, we have these wonderful things here that you can get on eBay. And they're kind of crappy when you get them on eBay, but they, they work. A little nibbler cutter that you mount on your drill and this part spins here and it chews out the cut by the with that thing going up and down it just kind of shears off a little line they work pretty well but they're slow especially with this I'm using 18 gauge metal which is really thick it's about as thick as these things will cut and like I said this one was about 20 bucks I've got one mounted to my router table which you'll see in a minute about 50 bucks it's better than this one and they're both made in China but you can get a good German way made one for about 200 bucks from a Rodman drill in California. You look him up online, he sells really nice German made drill bits for cheaper than you get them at the hardware store and a lifetime replacement for those too. You mail him a broken one, he mails it back, no questions asked. Real good guy, I met him in person at the SEMA show. So anyway, but you know, for my purposes of prototyping this, this process, I just bought a couple of cheapies. This one's for freehanding and roughing it out of the sheet metal, I keep it loose. And then the other one is mounted to this router table. See, I've got it stuck up in there. Now, the nice thing about these is they have a little threaded section on here. That made it easy to mount. I was able to cut a piece of a quarter inch steel, drill a hole through it, and put a, uh, a nut. I believe it was like a 15 millimeter nut on there. Weld the nut to the piece of metal, bolt the piece of metal to the bottom of the uh, router table, and that thing sticks up perfectly flush, and you can adjust the height with the nut by turning it. So. I actually double knotted this so you can lock it in place and you can vary the height by doing that. So I got it nice and flush in the router table there. So once you got your pieces laid out, you need to, uh, you know, just like drawing anything with a compass, you want to pin the end to cut your arcs first. So when you lay them out, here's some of the scrap pieces because I've already rolled all my pieces up. You drill a little pinhole for the center point of your arc and then you, you lay out the ends of your arc. And you just scratch them. I just, you know, tied my uh, scriber 
to a piece of wood and pinned it to the center and just made the arc, just drawing, like drawing with a compass. And then you do the same thing with this. Now this table is kind of small. You gotta do some pretty broad radii with these things. So to this little really old Sears Craftsman router table, I was able to screw this piece of angle aluminum using the existing leg bolts to it. Into that, I screwed a long piece of wood here. That piece of wood allows you to drill your center point wherever you happen to need it. And you gotta do an awful lot of these before you gotta replace that piece of wood. Here's a few of the pinholes. So basically, you would just take your piece, line it up with where your cutting head is, and you can see where it's gonna cut by the edge of that thing. That's where you're gonna cut. So you can line up the edge of your scribe line with that, and you just drill a hole right here. Bam, drill a hole right in that thing. And then pop a drill bit in there, fire up your, your cutter, and just slowly push it through, and it comes up with a perfect, absolutely perfect radius. Now, you're wondering how I power this. I forgot to mention that, that with a little $5 drill from a garage sale, which I have clamped in there, I was going to mount it permanently, but who knows how long it's going to last. So I just got it clamped on here, and you can just pull the button, pull the trigger and push a little button, locks it on. And I just plug it into a switched outlet on the wall and hit the switch on and off. Or just push the button to turn it on and off whenever you want. So that makes your perfect, your perfect arcs. They're really nice because when you roll them up, they'll sit perfectly flat. There'll be no space between the two pieces, and you don't have to fill anything in. With sheet metal this thick, you can take these together. You don't use any fill material. You just get the bead going, you heat it up till it starts turning a little bubble. Roll along. There's no fill, no grinding afterwards. You just sand it a little bit. It looks great. Now, how do you cut the straight lines though? Because you want those nice and straight too. Well. Again, I'm cheap, so here we go. Two pieces of aluminum, a bunch of holes drilled in it, and some wing nuts. That fits in your push fence guide, and you simply put your piece in between these two pieces of aluminum, line up where you want to cut with the scratch line here, which is where you're going to cut, or measure the distance from this edge to your cut line, and just double check that you're equidistant from that line. And all you do is fire it up again, with your piece clamped in there and push it through and you get perfectly straight cut lines. So when you roll them up again, the edge seam will turn out just perfect. And you won't have to do any filler. It's, it's great. And then the thing is you just hit it with a flapper wheel a little bit, polish it up. You can't even tell there's a weld seam there. So that is my uh, first set of these videos here. I'm not going to do any cuts for you because it takes a while. It's loud. But you know, I imagine with a better quality one of these cutters, it would go faster. One thing to remember about when you're doing this, these little cutters, they spit out a bazillion of these little tiny crescents of the steel. They will get all over the floor, they stick in your shoes, and then you track them in the house and step on them later in bare feet. So whatever you do, put like a, a tarp or something down on the ground, which I didn't do, I had to vacuum the whole garage. And don't track those things around. My shoes are, are stuck full of these things, but luckily they're scrap shoes, so I only wear them between the garage and the door to the house. And I take them off right when I get inside and throw them back out in the garage. So that's one important thing to keep in mind. You don't want to track inside if you got pets or whatever. They'll step on them with their bare paws and it's just not, not, a, not a pretty scene. So anyway, you can see some of the pieces I've made with that. This is actually these same pieces here. These are not full scale. I printed these on smaller paper and just used the numbers when I laid it out. But you can see this it's probably this piece here and you can see they sit nice and flat look at that and this one I already ground just flap or ground off the, the uh, excess but there's not a whole lot and this is the smallest section in the beginning of the dwell you can see that weld you can very tell there's a weld there except for all the burn marks but again no filler and that's actually barely proud of the surface there when you flap or grind it and and you want to paint these like flat black with an exhaust paint or whatever and you can even make straight sections. Straight sections are easy. You just cut the rectangle, the circumference, by the by the length. And all you got to do is use the push fence piece, which is this. And you know this whole rig cost me what? This was free. This was sitting in the tool room forever. That was like 50 bucks. Could have gotten one cheaper. Piece of wood. Shit, you got that laying around. This is a few bucks. So it doesn't really take much to get these patterns cut out. And then comes the fun part, rolling them up. But the key to make them roll up nice and come together nice is your prep and your pattern cutting. And that's how you get really nice, good patterns without having to have, 
you know, a whole sheet metal shop in your garage. What's, who the hell's got room for that? I sure don't. I'm sure some people do. But anyway, so stay tuned for part two, where I will demonstrate my homemade variable angle slip roller, which I made from parts primarily purchased at the local hardware store for far less than the average cost of a sheet metal uh, slip roller.